Okay, now let's, let's move on. Look, have a look at this. Uh, this is what's called a Kindle. Um, and it's one of the biggest uh, prezies, Christmas presents, uh, that was bought over Amazon uh, this year, knocking uh, Harry Potter off the uh, top spot, I think, a lot of the big sellers. Now, if you don't know uh, what they are, basically, electronic readers. So this is a book. As you can see, I can change the pages and just read through the particular book that I've selected on this uh, little e-reader, as they're called. And you can have cool. how many? Hundreds and hundreds and I hundreds? I don't know, sort of 15,000 books or something. Amazing, like. isn't it? Just on that little thing. Right, so yeah. you can see it's very, very convenient. So could it make the old-fashioned paper book redundant? Or are we about to see a new golden age for reading, a different sort of type of reading? We're joined by technology expert Kate Russell and Daybreak's favourite author, Philip Ardor. We love you, don't we? Thank you. It's lovely to have you, <laughs> have you both here. So for people who don't know then, tell us... How, what is an e-reader? How does it work? What's it all about? Well, basically, it's, it's exactly as it says. It's an mm. electronic device for reading your books. And you download the books. You can connect it via Wi-Fi, or if you get a certain type, you can uh, use a 3G connection, which is a, basically a mobile phone connection. Right. You go to the bookstore. You pick the book you want to order. Within seconds, it's downloaded onto your machine. And all and bookstores then... do this now, do they? Most, Most of the bookstores do, right, yeah. actually. specialist stores. Exactly. exactly. Um, Amazon, WH Smith, Waterstone. Mm. Barnes and Noble is a very big sort of global um, global supplier as well, and they all will sell e-books for your e-reader. And there are lots of different types of e-reader. It's not just the Kindle. There's a Sony one. There's a, a B book. Um, there's you can yeah, use I've your got iPad. The, I've got the iPad one here, which, exactly. is, which is a bigger book. There we go. Look. Exactly. This is like a hardback compared to the uh, <laughs> and even small soft ones. I mean, I've got one here which is on my Sorry. Android phone. Oh wow! Well, and this is a free app that I've downloaded from. Um, to read the books, and then you right. can download the books, and you get free books, you get low-cost so, books. I, I mean, it sounds like an amazing bit of kit. Philip, thumbs amazing, up or thumbs down? Amazing bit of kit. I think anything that gets people reading is good. That's fantastic. Right. I think people get hung up about whether it's dead trees or whether it's a piece of technology. Now, of course, there are people for whom it'll never replace having shelves and shelves of books. My husband, for instance, I bought him one. Uh, it was pre-Kindle, actually. It was last Christmas I bought him one. I think he'd love it because he reads a couple of books a week. Uh, it's never really been out the box because yeah. he likes the smell, I, I, the I feel. Think, but that's, that's, that's the thing. It's, you know, yes. but, uh, it's, just, it's just the it's weather. It's aimed for us. I mean, I do. I have thousands of books in my house. I love it when I pick up a book and I open it. An old bus ticket falls out. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds memories. me when I last read it. There are the memories. There's the coffee stains. There's the smell of it. There's you can see yeah. what edition it is. And of course, you don't get that. But. Does that matter? Would a new generation will want... Um, I, I wouldn't use one of those. You wouldn't. Maybe, but like, that doesn't like, make it a bad thing at all. In these know? times of austerity, maybe it could be a, a cheaper option. Is it? Could it be cheaper than just buying a book or going well, down to the second hand bookstore? That's an interesting point because you'd think it would be because you haven't got the manufacture and distribution costs of a, of a physical book. And in some cases, in many cases, it is. Um, but there are some titles, more current titles, um, that aren't, in fact, that are more expensive. I was looking at an E&M Bank. That's Banks cheeky, book. isn't it? Well, when you look at the cost of producing a book, the actual physical production and distribution cost is only between 10 and 20 percent. So there is still an awful lot that goes into a book, developing the author, editing, right. okay. um, yeah, you know, I all think the that's rest really of that. really where I'd like to come in, because my, my only concern about it, because I think we can all read books how we like, is, is the cost of the download. Yeah. Because, of course, people say, well, you're not chopping down trees, you don't need a warehouse full of books, you don't need this, you don't need that. But that is, as Kate says, one very small aspect. Because you do have to, people do earn a living from writing, mm. and you have to pay the editors and all those things. So I think one has to keep keep that in view and Look I think you, eventually you the level will be, I cannot say. afford the razor much. it's tragic and I just <laughs> this, this is just this morning's growth because you got oh, me up so wow. early you know That's I'm incredibly manly as Kate can tell you uh, it's really interesting thanks so much indeed and I like the way the publishers are actually embracing this yeah uh, rather than sort of the music industry I think they learned from that haven't they and the they fact that there's like illegal they? downloads they're not getting caught up in that trap nice to meet you thanks so much Thank indeed for coming in